Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, a podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Together, Jake and his friends interview talents varying from actors, directors, writers, producers, composers, puppeteers, and so much more. Who will they be chatting with today? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. What is going on, you guys? And welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the show where nostalgia comes alive. I'm your host, your co-host Wyatt, host for this episode. Joining me as always, we have Chris Bixby, Matt Bingle, Marty Monster, and Jake, the guy that messes up a lot. How are you guys doing? <laughs> we are great. Well, we are doing very good. good. How, how, awesome. how are you? Awesome. I'm, I'm amazing as always, especially for this episode. Yes, who do we have today? We have somebody mm-hmm. big. <laughs> you guys saw our previous guest, big. This is big. He has worked on so many amazing stuff. A lot of Disney movies, such as Toy Story. But we know him for the Drunk Monkey and Dr. Doolittle series. Charlie Proctor in Monsters, Inc. and Howard in Rugrats. Here he is, Phil Proctor. How are you, Phil? Yay! 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 The crowd well, goes crazy. Well, uh, so, uh, what, a, what a mob. What a motley crew. <laughs> uh, uh, the, I'm wearing my uh, tie-dye shirt yeah. in yeah. honor of the nostalgia show, yeah. okay? And actually, I knew we knew the woman who... in. It, popularized tie-dye shirts her name was Mm tie-dye annie and uh, there was a a kind of a communal living place called the farm out here in los angeles and uh all kinds of fascinating people uh lived there and she was one of the people who lived there and she had a big vat out in the back of the house and that's where she created her tie-dye shirts and they caught on and now you know now they're commercially available everywhere so yeah so well, I it could be yeah Great. we know who you are uh, yeah it's, you it's hard to see who you are all i see is the top of your head oh. hey <laughs> there we go there you go i know who that guy is yeah <laughs> we know who you are but for those who are listening yourself. And, yeah. and don't know who you are can you tell us a little bit about yourself yeah let me see i i think i've got a show and tell here for you uh, <laughs> right. yeah i've i've actually i'm an actor from uh new york Went oh, to wow. Yale. I was in the Yale Dramat and with uh, John Badham, who directed Saturday Night Fever, uh, uh, Peter Hunt, who directed 1776 on Broadway, yeah. uh, Sam Waterston, who everybody knows, yeah. uh, 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 Skip Hennett, who was on The Electric Company, uh, Tom oh, Ligon, wow. who, oh, wow. who was on us. I mean, this amazing group of talented people and a fellow named Austin Pendleton, oh, wow. who is still acting. He's in the minutes now in New York, and we saw yeah. him after a couple of weeks ago, but Austin wrote two musicals that I starred in at, at Yale, Tom yeah. Jones and oh, Booth wow. is back in town. And the, uh, the lyrics were done by a kid named Peter Bergman. Okay. Wow. And Peter Bergman uh, was the founding member along with all of us of the fire sign theater group, yeah. okay? oh, wow. which, which wow. for me was like a 50 year career. Uh, and it started on Radio Free Oz, a listener yeah. supported on KPFK, a listener supported station. And uh, was it, and that's where I met David Osman and Phil Austin. Yeah. We discovered we were all fire signs. I'm a Leo, two oh, Sagittarians wow. and Aries, right? And yeah. we, we went on to this extraordinary success in turning out records and doing radio shows and all that stuff. But eventually, I branched out. Yeah. while I was doing all that into doing cartoon voices yeah. and, and radio commercials. And these are just, uh, this is a few of the oh, voices wow. that I did. Oh, there wow. you go. And, and I heard yes. you say, uh, I'm probably the best known as, you know, Howard. Yeah. And Howard in the yeah. Rugrats, the father of Phil and Lil. Oh, okay. wow. Yes. Hey. Yes. Yes. But you yes. guys also apparently uh, like the, yes. the, drunk, the drunk French monkey. <laughs> I am a social drinker. I, I, we we have we have a friend who's a fan of that. There we are. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh yeah, Mr. Murphy. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. So, uh, but I've also done, you know, um, Mo- Monsters Incorporated. Yep. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. This is my character. This is my character there. Okay. Oh, no. And oh, no. and I, I I am Doctor Vidic in the the game. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Assassin's Creed. Oh wow! <laughs> Asperger oh, wow. wants you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, I'm the chef in the Academy Award-winning *Spirited Away*. Oh wow! Cooking Ooh. up a delicious lizard there. You see, and uh, yeah. and and that's just a few of of the voices that I've done, or at least that I have pictures of. 
So yeah. it's it's an amazing career. Last week, no, yeah, actually last week and and uh, Monday and Tuesday, I narrated uh, a a, 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 um, a very famous long running. Uh, show in in uh, Laguna Beach called the Pageant of the Masters, oh, which wow. is you know living pictures. They yeah. make everybody makes these extraordinary living pictures and statues and things. And I was the narrator, which is why my voice is a little ragged for yeah. five shows because uh, my our friend Richard Doyle, who usually does it, is out with the COVID. Uh, okay, so uh, I stepped I in for him and yeah. got to do use my. <clears throat> I got to use my narrator's voice yeah. to see and, to, and describe all the pictures and what was coming up and all that. It was really yeah. fun. I had a ball. So, awesome. you know, uh, that plus uh, later this week, <clears throat> no, it's next week, I think, I'm doing a, a, a long running role of uh, Detective Pole House in the, the, the crazy family oriented Christian radio series Adventures in Odyssey. Has anybody oh, ever wow. heard of that? I think I have. No. I think I've heard of it. Been on for no, about no, no. <clears throat> for 25 <laughs> years or something. And I've been oh, on it no. for about 14 wow. of those years. Yeah. Oh, wow. So wow. I'm, I'm suddenly very busy again. Yeah. And I'm turning 82 on July 28th. Wow. wow. Hey, hey, I'm still wow. here. You know, happy early birthday. Yeah, happy early happy birthday. birthday. Yeah, happy early thank birthday, you. Thank yeah. you. Happy uh, almost birthday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and one last <laughs> plug, and then we can talk about whatever you want. Uh, I have a book. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's called Where's My Fortune Cookie? There it Ooh, is. Yeah. And and this is a, a, a an illustration that was in the Rolling Stone magazine by oh, oh, Bob, wow. Uh, wow. Bob Grossman, wow. who was who was Peter Bergman's roommate at Yale. Okay. Wow. Oh. A famous, famous artist. Yeah. And 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 this represents how we survived the Golden Dragon Massacre in 1977, uh, a, a restaurant um, a shooting uh, between two rival Chinese gangs in San Francisco in 1977. Wow. Okay. And wow. I dropped under the table <clears throat> and uh, five killed, 11 wounded. And at the time, it was the worst massacre in American history. Wow. But that wow. sink in. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So, but I was there. And and here I am. So yeah. I, I made it. That's so awesome. That is awesome. I told you everything. Good night. No. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so kind of kind of going back to the beginnings a bit. What or who inspired you to you know kind of get into voice acting? Well, yeah. first and foremost, Bob and Ray. Yeah. Ooh. Bob and Ray way before your time, but Bob and Ray uh, were masters of the. Uh, wry humor uh, and what can I kind of parody parody humor, yeah. you know, and and they were they they were so smooth and funny together, and they were very surrealistic at the same time, and I just loved them, and I I would uh, uh, my my dad was kind of an entrepreneur, and he uh, uh, would bring inventions into the house and then raise money for them, like the the first Polaroid camera, you know, and wow. he showed me the first transistor. OK, so this is going to replace radio tubes. Yeah, and it was this little piece of wire with like a little plastic tube in the middle, uh, not yeah. a tube, a little plastic mm. thing. <clears throat> and uh, and one of the things that he uh, also brought to the house was were tape recorders. Yeah. And the, the first recorder that I remember using in the house actually made little discs. OK, it oh, actually wow. transcribed on a little plastic disc. And I and I have the recording somewhere of me singing uh, a uh, a Christmas carol, okay? Oh, wow. yeah. uh, and then we graduated to reel-to-reel -reel tape. No, to wire. Yeah. Wire recording. And then to reel and reel, reel-to-reel -reel tape. And finally, to a reel-to-reel -reel tape uh, machine with a built-in radio. Yeah. So I could record Bob and Ray, the show. They had a morning show in New York. And yeah. It was like you know, three hours or something like that. And I'd listen to the first hour. And then I would have to go off to school because I was in the Allen Stevenson School Orchestra. Yeah. Okay, and I played the violin and I recorded the rest of the shows. Uh, and then my mom and I would listen to it or I would listen to it while I was doing my homework. And yeah. some of those 
And, and then and then I started to edit together the funniest bits that happened, especially those in which they broke one another up. OK, yeah. or, or, or broke up the newsman who is who is de- desperately trying to to read the news straight. They climb under the table and, and untie his shoes, you know, <laughs> or set fire to his script. You know, and, yeah. and he, had, he had a very bizarre laugh. He, his laugh was like this. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. OK, and, and I've got yeah. all of those breakups. Well. Eventually, a guy named Larry Joseph, who yeah. produced Bob and Ray in their last iteration on National Public Radio, uh, he took the tape and he put it on his compilation of Bob and Ray, the best of Bob and Ray. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. And actually, that, that was my first editing job. Right. <laughs> and, and, yeah. uh, and so I was fascinated with that. Also, Ernie Kovacs. Wow. Okay? Ernie Kovacs, yeah. a great surrealist who was doing live television early in the morning on NBC TV, I think it was, <coughs> excuse me. And yeah. I would watch his show religiously. Yeah. And, you know, he, uh, and I just learned so much from it. And then I started doing my own funny recordings on the tape recorder. And, uh, uh, and I always have been able to sing. All right. So yeah. I carried, I carried some of that zaniness into my, uh, performances as female leads in the annual Gilbert and Sullivan show at the Alan Stevenson school. And I found immediately that I just loved being in drag. No, I know. Sorry. I loved, <laughs> <laughs> I loved singing in front of an audience. I loved acting in front of an audience. I loved it all. And, and so I looked for opportunities to do that in, in, in all of my schooling. I went to Riverdale Country School in the Bronx after that and, and did some uh, the lead in a, in a play and uh, singing in a, in a wonderful Kurt Weill thing called Down in the Valley. I just uh, it was interesting because I couldn't keep up violin playing with my singing. I'd either have to be in the orchestra, you know, of a show or I'd have to be on stage. And I chose on stage because you know, everybody yeah. can see me, you know, and right. and. Uh, and then I went to, to Yale pretty much for the same reason. They have a great drama school. And so, yeah. you know, and, and little did I know that I was going to be thrown together with all these extraordinary talented people and that we were going to actually, you know, create our own style of acting because yeah. it, drama schools in those days <clears throat> would pretty much say, uh, this is how you sit in a chair, you know, this is how you this is how you enter a, 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 a scene, you know, how you open the door. <clears throat> and we just mm-hmm. would, you know, do whatever the hell we wanted. Yeah. And, right. and, yeah. And, and it, it was a it was a new way of acting. We acted using our personalities first mm-hmm. and it changed the whole drama school. They all became envious of what we were doing. And uh, and actually, you know, it liberated a lot of artists. Uh, Joan Van Ark was uh, one of the ladies that I worked with. Uh, and, oh, I worked with all kinds of wonderful people at Yale. But then <clears throat> in my uh, senior year, uh, I had gotten an agent because of, of, of the musicals that I was in. <clears throat> and she sent me down to New York to read for a soap opera. And it was the part of a juvenile delinquent, okay, yeah. in a soap opera, and, uh, Julie Kurtz in The Edge of Night. And I, uh, I read oh, wow. for it, and it was hmm. actually taped. They had, a, you know, a, ta- a, a camera, and they taped it. This was in 1962, okay? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> wow. So I'm going back to get the train up to New Haven, and I'm walking through Grand Central Station, the main concourse, and I hear, Will Philip Proctor please report to the station master's office? <gasps> I, wow. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I was <laughs> agape, wow. agog. I was gobsmacked. And then, it, Will Philip Proctor, please. I said, Well, I'm Philip Proctor. So I, I, went, up, I <laughs> went up to the information booth. They said, Where's the station master's office? And she pointed over to a, uh, an area in, in the Grand Central Station <clears throat> with desks and phones on them and conductors in conductors' outfits sitting at each desk. It was very uh, Kafka-esque. Yeah. So I go over, I say, I'm Phil Proctor. And uh, it, he says, uh, call your agent. <laughs> okay. So okay. I go over to a pay phone, children. A pay phone is a phone yeah. you put coins in and you lift yeah. it. Okay. 
Yeah. Are you over to a payphone? Yeah, right. Hello, and and uh, uh, and 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 she said, "You got the part." What? Wow. So wow. I'm suddenly on a soap opera. Okay, and and I learned a lot. You can imagine doing that, and it was live when we did it first. Live. Yeah. Imagine how terrified I was at first I'm day. <laughs> but imagine. after that, we went to tape, and that mm. meant I could actually watch my performance. Yeah. Uh, and and I learned a great deal doing that. For instance, uh, I got myself a pair of contact lenses. All right. Put away my glasses. All right. <clears throat> and uh, because they had teleprompters with the script on it, they were just, yeah. you know, off to the side. <clears throat> and and I would use them occasionally. And I thought, can can the audience see that I'm using, you know, an offstage uh, teleprompter? So I would watch my performance. And no, you couldn't tell at all. It was like I'd look away for a minute and then, you know, come back to the scene. Couldn't tell at all. So that relieved me greatly and helped me to perform more naturalistically during my run. And then finally, the <clears throat> one of the writers came up to me, say, Phil, we've got a storyline for you. I said, great. You're going to be murdered. <laughs> what? Wow. What? He said, but don't worry, You'll, we'll have you back for the flashbacks in the in the courtroom scene. I said, yeah. oh, oh, OK, so yeah. that was the end of my career you know, on a soap opera, which is OK, because, yeah. you know, there are people who are on that soap for 20 years, you know, uh -huh. they grew old on that soap. But that's yeah. kind of all that they did. You know, whereas yeah. Yeah. shorter roles or or guest starring roles, because lots of very famous actors <clears throat> would do, a, you know, a day or two on those soaps uh, mm. that, that let us do on to do something else. And yeah. I ended up, you know, singing on Broadway. So oh, what's wow. so bad about that? <clears throat> I'm sorry. I hear I'm making my fortune with my voice and I've got a frog in my throat. <laughs> rabbit, it. <rabbit. Yeah, laughs> <just, laughs> if I can clear it, <clears throat> get out of there. Out, oh, damn frog. <laughs> <laughs> there, that's much better. Uh, All right. So anyway, uh, that led to a, a musical singing career in shows. Yeah. And I did this one off Broadway play, which was a musical adaptation of Moliere's School for Wives called The Amorous Flea. And I won a Theater World Award for that, as did my co-star, Imelda DeMartin. <clears throat> and that show went out to Los Angeles. And oh, wow. that was my introduction to L.A., wow. OK? Yeah. And, and uh, uh, boy, did I learn a lot. I didn't know how to drive. I grew up in New York. You know, you take the bus, you walk, you take the subway. Uh, and right. and suddenly, yeah. Yeah. You know, suddenly I'm in Los Angeles. <clears throat> and if you move the letters of Los Angeles around, it spells legs on sale. Oh, wow. <laughs> OK. <laughs> you, have you have to have wheels. You have to have wheels. So I learned That's how to drive. And I was exactly. just getting comfortable with that when my agent called and said, <clears throat> you, they've cast you in a, a Broadway musical called The Time for Singing, and they want you to come back immediately. So my understudy went on in L.A. I went back and did this extraordinary musical uh, on Broadway. And, and you know, really, I, I, I've always done something. I've always been working, hmm. which was my goal. And I treated any time off as a vacation, basically. Yeah. So, you know, so I've had a very active, fun career doing. I also wanted to do as many things as I could, Yeah. you know, try whatever I was capable of doing uh, to, to entertain people. I wanted to do uh, and I could do everything, but I can't juggle. Or I can't right. juggle. Yeah. The, the flying right. Karamazovs are good friends of mine, especially Paul Majid and Paul. One night <clears throat> uh, they all slept over in this very house. I'm in mean, now. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. Mm, and they tried to teach me oh. how to juggle three balls. Uh, couldn't do it. Uh, nope. but, but two balls is sufficient for a man like me. Yeah. Right. Next question, please. <laughs> there you go. Wow. <laughs> Hey, Jake, why, Jake, why don't you take the next? Uh, yeah. How one? did it was like Charlie Proctor, Howard and the Drunk Monkey come about? Yeah. Well, yeah. <clears throat> it's <clears throat> probably clear, cut this out. <clears throat> cut it out. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, the you get jobs really through the audition process. Yeah. OK. Yep. And uh, and that's and, and out here, 
in the 70s, the late 60s and 70s, when Firesign Theater was actually very famous and touring yeah. around and everything, there was also ample opportunity to do uh, voices for radio commercials and uh, and, cart and and voices for cartoons. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, the animated feature business really didn't start till later with, mm -hmm. with the advent of Pixar and, and yeah. You know, Disney obviously was doing great animated movies, but uh, they were kind of out of the reach of, you know, of, of uh, new people. And they had kind of, you know, Mel Blanc did all the voices for all the characters. And yeah. But uh -huh. Anna Barbera uh, was a, uh, a company that turned out the Flintstones and uh, the Jetsons and Richie uh -huh. Rich yeah. and the Smurfs. Right. OK. Yeah. And yep. so. There was ample opportunity to audition. And once you get into it, then you, they would use you for other things. You became part of a repertory company. Yeah. When, and so when I got uh, a part in the Smurfs, actually, it was a, a Scottish villain, I think, and, you know, some kind of a Scottish villain I had to play. Uh, oh, wow. Th they saw that, you know, I was I was talented and I was fun to work with and because uh, uh, I was on drugs and uh, and no. And it's fun to work. With. <laughs> and everybody had fun doing those cartoons. When I know when I went to my first Smurfs session, I was knocked out because there are different ways of doing cartoon voiceovers. Sometimes you work in isolation, right, Elmo? Yeah. Just by yourself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then they, they cut you together with the person you're working with and what have you, yeah. the other character, uh, uh, like Kermit. Uh, yeah. It yeah. was in my throat. Yeah. Get out of my throat, Kermit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. Oh so uh, so yeah. I, I walk into this room, re recording studio, and everybody is sitting there. We're all doing it together like a radio show with the scripts mm. in front of us, you know, on, on little stands. And there's Jonathan Winters. Okay. Oh, wow. And there's Alan mm. Young. And there's all these other famous voiceover people I'd heard about. And all of a sudden, I'm part of this wonderful company, a repertory company. And from that, I, they would cast me in other uh, parts in the yeah. Hanna-Barbera cartoons. Another way that I, I got into the business was doing industrials, which were very, uh, which was a very lucrative business at the time. <clears throat> they were just introducing computers to office, were office workers. And IBM, yeah. the company, and <laughs> IPP and IBM, uh, yeah. no, uh, they they uh, were were putting together training programs to teach people how to use computers. And I got cast in, in with a company called Traytech in those uh, those things. And they were on camera, and they were voiceovers. Yeah. You know the the training training programs, and that's where I met this beautiful Norwegian girl named Barbro who was uh, uh, in charge of the sound design and I uh, ended up marrying her. She was oh, my, wow. Yeah, she wow. was my second wife. And uh, now I'm married to my final wife, Melinda yeah. Peterson, who is, you know, mm. I, we've been together for 30 years now, married wow. for wow. Uh, been together longer. But I had two other marriages before that. And I have a beautiful daughter, Kristen, from uh, my alliance with Barbro. And uh, she just came back from Oslo, where she and my two grandchildren, Audrey and Bowen, uh, accompanied her on a trip back to meet uh, Grandma. Yeah. Barbara. Oh, wow. So, so nice. it's a rich life. Awesome. <clears throat> and also, my daughter lives like five minutes away from me, and she has wow. a pool. She has a pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's there all good. Go. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have like a specific favorite moment at all from? voicing characters like uh jake mentioned like charlie proctor howard, or howard. well yeah. i'll tell you mm -hmm. <clears throat> doing the pixar movies yeah uh, starting with uh uh which one oh I, I can't remember which one was the first one i know with, uh, we did beauty and the beast but that was disney uh, bugs life say what no, a bug's no, life no, yeah no, a bug's he life. wasn't a bug's life that's it yeah a bug's life yeah. Uh, did that upset you, Elmo? That I was in a bug's life. No. <laughs> <laughs> <That's enough laughs> They're okay with that. He, he probably eats bugs. 
He likes to yeah. eat bugs. So yeah, bugs. Are, <laughs> but <laughs> but being I, in the I, Pixar I, I movies, like being in the Pixar movies was such an adventure because they were developing and refining computer yeah. animation, right? Oh yes. And so we'd come in like what? when we did um, um, Finding Nemo. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, amazing we, movie. We're amazing. Looking at, Classic. We're looking at the yeah. silt in the water underneath the sea and the rays of light coming through. And every time that we go in to do a Pixar movie, right up to the last one I did was in, Inside yeah. Out. You know, we would be Ooh, right, amazing we, movie. We, we'd yes. be just astounded and so grateful to be a part of this g growing, wonderful uh, area of animation. Yeah. Okay. So, but at, in terms of characters, I think the, uh, the, the drunken French monkey is yeah. my favorite <laughs> because I got to <clears throat> basically ad lib uh, with, with uh, uh, the directors. And, uh, uh, and of course, it's always funny to speak with a French accent. Yeah. Uh, I, I can tell you a story mm -hmm. about that. <clears throat> I was working with Mel Brooks. I actually have a picture of us together uh, in the bathroom here. So if I take nice. a bathroom break, I'll bring it out and show you. But um, and he uh, he was overdubbing. Not, let me get go back a minute. There was a very famous French film called Les Visiteurs, uh, The Visitors, uh, with uh, Jean Reno, and it was a story of <clears throat> of a, a knight and his squire who threw a, a, a wizard back in the 14th century, gets to travel into the future to modern France uh, yeah. in order to right a wrong that had happened. They have to get a certain ring, ancestral ring, that's been passed on in order to go back in time and prevent something that they did from happening. Wonderful idea. But, of course, the comedy all came from these medieval characters confronting our modern world right and mm -hmm. so yeah. it was it was so successful in paris in france rather that it, it grossed more uh money than any other film ever a comedy film ever made wow. at that time wow. so so of course though we decided america decided to dub it into english and get it out to the people all right so yeah. wow. mel brooks is chosen as a director and mel brooks at our first meeting, because uh, I was cast as, as part of the uh, company, uh, says, mm -hmm. oh, let's do this with a French accent because oh, yeah. the French accent is funny. You know, he's not my dog. <laughs> so yeah. we say, okay, great. We will do it with a French accent. So uh, the only problem was that the, the language that these people were speaking, the actors, was a very fast Parisian French. Yeah. And we had to match their lips, right? So we had to talk very fast. Mm -hmm. we had French yeah. Well, when they showed the film at a test screening in Encino, the audience thought we were speaking French. And it was never yeah. released. It was never wow. released. Uh, it was, it was, it's Mel's only failure. <laughs> yeah. wow. Don't mention it. <laughs> wow. But of course, it was a, a, so much fun to do. Yeah. You know? uh, uh, how did I get to that? Oh, yeah, from the French monkey. Yeah. So the, the French accent can both work for you and against you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know. I know we were talking about Pixar. There's a certain Pixar movie I know Jakey wants to know two voices of. Jakey, you want to ask about that one? Sure. Um, so, uh, I thought we, I thought we okay, a certain question. story. You know what I mean? Oh, Toy Story. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I can forget Jakey. So, Jake. <laughs> so <laughs> um, so there's like one character. One character or two characters, like well, as two, it was two. Yeah. So like, there's a cult, there's like two two um voices that he did, which is the um the piece of planet announcer and the um and the piece um guard or something like that. Yeah. Did, did mm -hmm. you voice both of them? Yeah, I did. Oh I wow, did the, the guard. I thought it was a lady because yeah. I watched the clip before and it sounded like a girl. Nope, that was me. Uh, you know, oh, wow. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you speaking go. of that, I did voices for the Disney animated film Tarzan. Yeah, okay. yes. uh, no, I haven't seen right. that in so long. Well, and I was an it's elephant good. in that. Yeah. Too. Okay, right. So we mm -hmm. we record it over in Disney in Studio B, where so many famous cartoons were made, and and uh, they invited us to a cast and crew sc uh, screening, 
at the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood. Yeah. Which, oh, you know, it's a beautiful, big, ornate theater. Been around forever. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and so I'm sitting up there watching the movie and there comes the elephant and he starts to speak. And I thought, well, that's not my voice. They must have they must have redone. I must I guess they didn't like me and they replaced my voice. So then uh, maybe a week or two later, I, I got the uh, uh, the was a DVD. Yes, yeah. I guess of the of the of the movie. And I listened to it at home. It was my voice, but I didn't recognize it because it was in this cavernous theater. Yeah. You know, and so it, it was I learned a lesson. It was like, oh, my God, it, it, the 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 audience will. Yeah. Well, a voice will sound different. Right. At home yeah. and, and in, a, in a theater. Yeah. yeah. The experience. And I was, of course, relieved that it was my voice, you know. Wow. Right. Awesome. Right. So you asked me about Toy Story, yeah. which also was a very early uh, iteration. Uh, and that one, of course, completely blew our minds because yeah. of, the, yeah, oh, my God, mm -hmm. what a great. I, I, I bet it did because it was Pixar's first animation, first movie, I believe. Yeah, first full yeah. length yeah, movie. First full length movie. And, yeah. Yeah. And then they followed up with uh, Toy Story 2, which, which is Chris's did. favorite. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. And and uh, a long a long string of other brilliant wonderful big songs. Yeah, oh yeah, this is amazing. Next three years, Toy Story will be turning thirty, which is crazy. Yeah, no, I know it's nuts. Don't put him on that. It's, it's, yeah. Oh, that is. It's just hard to think because when yeah. I was when I was born, the movie was only I think five. <laughs> and then uh, I, now it's that, right? turning thirty. Like uh, turning thirty. You can imagine how, how I feel. I bet. Having, you know, mm -hmm. the first the first thing I did was uh, a live television program on WPIX TV in New York. Uh, and it was an imp improvised show. I was about, I don't know, maybe 10 or 11 years old. And it was called Uncle Danny Reads the Funnies. And because the the. Um, uh, Pixar studio was in the Daily News building in New York. Yeah. And right. So <clears throat> he would be holding up the Daily News newspaper and then they'd cut to close ups of the panels of various cartoons, uh, various uh, yeah, series, whatever they call them. And we would mm -hmm. discuss it or do voices for it and whatever. And that was my very first job. All lives. So he can't never can never return wow. to it. But I've been doing this for a very long time. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. not just voiceovers, but it, yeah. it's all like different kinds of acting, you know, yeah. using yeah. your acting skills. I, I learned a lot about the voiceover industry from the people who were doing it on a more regular basis. Mm -hmm. You know, I watched yeah. out the work. I got to work with them in, in commercials and things. And then I refined it uh, so that I had, you know, I felt comfortable uh, in in doing whatever a character they threw at me. Yeah, because I could, you know, I could call on a lot of different voices to do things. Uh, could you really? Yes, you know, and and yeah. uh, and I also speak seven languages. So oh, wow. and I sing. So all of those things together allowed me to do uh, voices for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of movies. And yeah, it's in series, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, because you, you out here, there's a thing they call the loop group. Uh, it's a group of uh, actors who are uh, talented in improvisation and language <clears throat> and dialects. And yeah. uh, so I, I'd be working with, you know, people like me who were immensely uh, who had great talents in all kinds of directions. And uh, and, and we, we add background voices to movies, right? And television series. I don't know if people know this, but when, let's say you're shooting a scene in a diner and you've got yeah. two people talking. Well, in the background, of course, are other people, you know, talking and eating and everything. Well, they are miming it. They can't talk because if they do, they can't edit together the scene. Uh, uh, well, I have a question for you guys. Uh, uh, Elmo, what would you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Elmo. I guess um, Elmo, 
The, has the cat got your tongue? <laughs> I think so at this point. I think. <laughs> what, what was it like? What was it like doing the Rugrats? I don't know. Movies? What do you? Oh, say, say that again. What was it like doing the Rugrats movies? <laughs> oh, so much fun! I'm you know, we, uh, in one of them we got <laughs> to work with Bruce Willis. <laughs> Oh, he did the voice of our dog. Ah, uh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Rugrats go wild. wild. Yeah. Rugrats, yeah. Yeah, Rugrats go yeah. wild. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, they were, uh, we, we did a recording on the Paramount lot. Yeah. Which is, you know, hmm. famous, great old movie lot. And uh, uh, I remember in, in some of the sessions, I was doing two jobs. I would be doing an ADR job over in the valley for a television show. Yeah. Oh, ADR, ADR. That's the looping and dubbing. Where yeah. you replace other people's voices, or you do background voices, right? As I right. told you about, uh, mm-hmm. and and I timed, I I actually timed the driving to see if I could get to my session at Paramount during our lunch break, as it were, you know, yeah. and 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 in those days we didn't have uh, 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 guidance systems, women telling you where to go, you know, yeah, make, make mm-hmm. a legal U turn, you know. Uh, <laughs> Make a wiggle right. easier, right. or, or my favorite, of course, is uh, let's see, what is it? Um, what do they say when you you change, you you go and you do something wrong? Recalculating, right? Yeah. Recalculating. Yeah. Exactly. Recalculating. So it, it didn't have that. All we had were these map books. Okay, Thomas Guides, they were called. So I actually got in my car a day before the session, drove yeah. to the ADR session in the valley, and then drove into Hollywood to Paramount to see if I could make it in a certain period of the time. Yeah. And I did. I mean, look, everything is so yeah. much easier now. We we do most of our work from a home studio, which in my case is just basically a, a good microphone. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And uh, and, and earphones. And uh, and we do our auditions. We don't have to drive all over the Los An- the greater Los Angeles area yeah. to you know to to various casting houses to to uh, to do it but what we miss from that is the human contact yeah, right? yeah. It's yeah. the same thing with with our I'm with a wonderful agency called CESD been with them for right. decades yeah. mm-hmm. right and and we used to go in and sit in a in a kind of a green room uh, and and then be called to go into a, a booth and record our audition OK, and and so we got to know one another. Yeah. All, you know, all of the voiceover people were hanging out, at least at my agency. This was happening all over the city and other voiceover agencies, too. But we, we got to know one another. Yeah. And it, and yeah, and it was really fun and catch up with what was going on and meet wonderful people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And now it's just it's just me and the cats. Right. <laughs> and yeah. and my, my wife. Uh, that's it. And, and and me alone doing this kind of work. On the other hand, yeah. it yeah. does allow mm-hmm. us to do uh, more interesting work right from home. I've mm-hmm. done numerous podcasts, yeah. uh, you know, roles in, in podcasts. Wow. And actually, I have uh, I have one coming up uh, for a, a, a new series. I probably can I talk about it? Probably can't talk about it. But but there are well, uh, there. Yeah. Yeah, when when it's launched, I'll tell you about it. Uh, okay, but it's it's All great. Right. It's great fun. The first one that I did was for a show called uh, uh, Operation Cordelia, and it, it's it's oh, wow. uh, it's since then been aired. This is a couple of years ago, and uh, the session was a, a Zoom like session. The engineer was in Culver City. The producer. Uh, was in, the writer producer was in Las Vegas and the uh, d- director was in Berlin, Germany. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. Oh, and I said, uh, Oh wow. man, brave new world, you know, and, <laughs> <laughs> and it was absolutely fascinating. So I've gotten you, we've all gotten used to it now. And yeah. it, but for instance, I'm going in to do the adventures in Odyssey, my uh, my uh, recurring role as uh, Detective Polehouse uh, on uh, next uh, Thursday, I think it is. Wow. And uh, and and because of covid, uh, there are different ways that we do it. Some of the actors are actually at home mm-hmm. doing it. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the uh, and those of us who are actually in the studio are oh, there goes a car. Oh, I just got some mail. 
mail, real <laughs> physical <laughs> junk mail. Hooray. <laughs> 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 this is a, this is also the only way I make a living between jobs because people yeah. keep sending me coins, right? Of course, yeah. they want me to contribute to a charity, but I just take the money and run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, where, where was I? See, how can you be in two places at once when you're not anywhere at all? Yeah. Fireside Theater asks. Well, that's the way I feel now. Yeah. So Adventures in Odyssey and the, the others of us are we're in isolation booths. OK, yeah. maybe next to one another. Uh, so the, the, they have people have have found all kinds of creative ways to work uh, in, in isolation like this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And We've done interviews with a lot of other voice actors who can attest, you know, voice acting. It, it's Conroy, it's yeah. definitely done. It's done differently for sure mm -hmm. now than it was, yeah. say, than it was, say, like 10 20 years ago. Oh, for oh, heaven's sake. Yeah. yeah, sure. But really, even only like maybe five to seven years ago. Yeah. 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 You know, they started mm -hmm. changing the game. And, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the other thing that was uh, over the years has happened that has changed the game is the use of celebrities to do yeah. voiceovers, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And which is odd because in terms of radio voiceovers and think commercials, it, it's hard to recognize who it is unless they yeah. say, oh, this is Richard Dreyfus. And I'm driving a, a an old automobile, you know, so, but no, they don't do that. So it, it takes the jobs away from uh, us professionals and puts it in the hands of celebrities. Yeah. And the same thing is happening yeah. you know, with casting in in uh, in movies in animated films. Yeah. Some people, yeah. some actors are really good at it. Others, mm -hmm. are, you know, mm -hmm. it. but the, the names do draw people to the project. Yeah. So, yes. That's okay. okay. Yeah, like if you, yeah, like if you uh, think of Hotel Transylvania, Adam Sandler's yes. character Dracula, his voice was recast to Brian Hull. Yeah, so yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Right. Hey, yeah, hey, Brian Hull is yeah. amazing. Hey, hey, Matt, 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 I feel like you should ask one. Yeah, why don't yeah. you ask one? You, you almost mean. had enough. <laughs> 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 uh, there's, your, there's your running gag for this episode, and probably many more to come, folks. Uh, we. Had, <laughs> We had talked about uh, the Rugrats movie earlier, but what was it like doing All Grown Up? Yeah, yeah the series. Oh, yeah, that was that was fun. Yeah. Um, and I'm sorry it didn't catch on. But no, the, okay. the, 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 the theme song thing. was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> yes. that's also um, uh, what's his name from Devo, right? Uh, our composer. What's our composer? Uh, what's Mark, his name? Mark. Mark. Mark uh, my, mother's 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 ball. Ball. Yeah. Mother's, mother's, mother's ball. Ball. yeah, that's right. Yeah. And when we originally started, just a little side uh, trip here. When we originally started, we recorded on Highland Avenue in a little studio. Uh, you'd walk through the, the door and there would be uh, people drawing cartoons, you know, all, a whole bunch of people drawing, drawing stuff. Then yeah. you go upstairs to these tiny little studios and we did the voices in one studio and Mark Mothersbaugh was doing the music right next door. In wow. another studio. Wow. You know, it was really a mom and pop operation. Klasky Shupo. With yeah. The, 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 uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Amazing company. Yes. And then they, they were so successful, they, they moved to um, uh, the, uh, a big, uh, their own building on Sunset Boulevard with, you know, massive studios and everything. But anyway, you asked me uh, what it was like to do that. Yeah. W we came in one day and we realized that. Our, our characters, they had taken our cartoon characters and made us older. Yeah. Okay. They were like, there were streaks of white in, in my character. Even Spike, hair. they made Spike older too. Yeah, everybody oh, yeah. was older. And, everybody was. Yeah. And, and I, I don't really remember very much about the, 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 the episodes that I, I did, but I thought it was a great idea. It you was, know, yeah. and and originally, but again, it was called All Grown Up originally. <laughs> yeah. and they changed it to All Grown Up, and that's right. when I thought, well, they're in trouble here then, because you know, <laughs> All Grown Up is funny. It's cute, you know. Yeah. It, you know, it tells you what you're going to be uh, enjoying. Yeah. Anyway, the one thing about that series that it, it makes it in yours it it uh, makes it endure is yeah. that it can be watched by older people and and kids. You know, because yeah. you're getting the, the parents side of it as well. And yeah, and, and I have been getting uh, fan mail from all over the world. Because wow. Oh, 
I just I wow. just sent a postcard off to a fan in China. Okay. Wow. wow. Uh, yeah. France, wow. China, that South America, uh, uh, the, the Netherlands, uh, Germany. I, I mean, they come from all over Russia. Uh, in Russia, they call the show Uch et oh, wow. uh, oh, those kids. Oh, those kids. Uch et idiotie. And, and in uh, France, they call them Les Rogues Mouffants or something like Les Rogues Mouffants. So, each each country uh, apparently overdubs the cartoons, and and I always write back since I'm I'm a polyglot and I love languages. I always write uh, uh, postcards in the language of the country from which I get the request. You know, and mm -hmm. and nobody seems to be impressed by that because they think I speak the, their language anyway, since the cartoons are all overdubbed. Do you know what, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. oh yeah, Howard speaks, you know, you Urdu. I didn't know yeah. Howard can speak Urdu. <laughs> but anyway, it's 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 amazing. fun. It's fun to know that. And it really is amazing how many requests for autographs I still get. That's awesome. You know, oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. This is probably a big question because there were so many, but do you have a favorite like Rugrats episode? It could be one that features, you know, Howard or not, hey, it, it, or any of the other voices, because you did other voices as well. Well, I've, yeah, I've done some voices of some of the uh, criminals, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, there was one called the big, the big heist or something like that. Uh, the answer to your question is no. I, I don't have any favorite ones. I, yeah. I just remember the wonderful experience of being in. A television series with yeah. you know, an, mm -hmm. yeah. awesome. an accent on the series. You knew the question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, you knew you knew they were gonna get a new script character doing this, right? You know, and what other characters am I playing and what kind of voices can I come up with? Yeah. That's what I love about it. I love the I love the chain. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because last year, I think. Uh, uh, so, and it, I'm all my favorite is doing it, being able to, yeah. and the challenge of of new material, you know, and the creation of, of new characters. I just mm -hmm. love that. Yeah. The variety of it, you know. Yeah. Especially because, if you will. Last year, Rugrats, of course, turned 30. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How Which about that? It's amazing. How, how, how does yeah. it feel that, you know, you were a part of such a. This you know phenomenal yeah. show that you know everybody grew up with was in, it was popular in like so many different countries. One yep. that spawned a bunch of was popular enough to spawn a bunch of movies, yeah. a spinoff, and a yep. revival. Like how does it how does it feel to be a part of such a you know iconic series, an enterprise? Yeah, it, yeah. it, it much, feels yeah. absolutely great. And I'll tell you one of the uh, uh, a story that represents the benefits of being in such a. Uh, a wonderful series. Uh, a friend, I, I'm going to start this story now. Uh, my wife and I, for four years, would fly over to Dublin, to Ireland, to do voices for a radio show, summer radio show series called the Mad Dog uh, Playhouse or yep. something like that. And uh, the reason that we got the job was because of the Rugrats. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Roger Gregg, who is an expat who uh, lives and, and teaches voice and audio in uh, Ireland, uh, he, we, we connected up because of um, some kind of voiceover yep. award that he got for mm -hmm. something he did. Yeah. And, and he was a fan of the Fireside Theater. <clears throat> but he said, Phil, would you be interested in doing some voices for, you know, the, the Mad Dog Theater? I said, sure. And he said, uh, uh, I said, but I, I, my, I have to, my wife has to be with me because Melinda does great voices too. So he oh, said, wow. okay. Now the reason why he was able to hire me was because of the Rugrats. The Rugrats was such a big success in Ireland that the moment they said Phil Proctor from the Rugrats, you know, is going to come over and do something. They got excited and they said, sure. Wow. And so awesome. wow. when I was there, wow. I, I did promotion on uh, a couple of early morning radio shows. Yeah. And I appeared on a television show that had a uh, Irish speaking turkey hand puppet 
so- sock puppet. It was it, the show. Mm, I yeah. just had sock puppets. Sorry, Elmo. You know, <laughs> just, uh, sock. Hey, wait, just, well, so I was going to say, Joe is just taking a break. It's so I'm like, just wait till when he comes. <laughs> oh no! You know, and his name is Julius. Where are you? Back here somewhere. Right, you can go on. Yeah. You, you want to come out here so Elmo can take a break? <laughs> yeah. Elmo, he he has break? another character. I've been out here for like an hour. I need a break. Yeah, he's got another friend. Yeah. That's me. Hey, Julius. Hey. Hello there. That's the, that's the the monster, isn't it? Yes. Isn't he? The, what, <laughs> what's your name? Dude. My name what, is Julius. Ju, Ju, Julie, what? Julius. 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 Like, okay. Like, like Julius Caesar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> looks like Julius had a seizure. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Sorry. Kind of. So anyway, uh, uh, it, it's been an amazing ride, and to be able—oh yeah, oh, oh the, the Irish story. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, we would be paid in euros, and then we travel around Europe after uh, doing one of these shows. Yeah. And at one point, <clears throat> when we were traveling around Ireland, we went down to uh, uh, an area. Uh, I don't remember what it was called. And I went into we went into the post office to send some stuff back to the states, <clears throat> and there I found uh, a bunch of stick figure. No, I, no, that's not right. A bunch of stickies of our characters. Oh wow, oh, that's characters on these uh, silver little cutouts, pretty big too, about six inches that you could put on the and the wind, windshield of your car or the back of your car. And so I bought up a bunch of them to bring back to the, you know, to the cast. And I thought, <clears throat> well, when we get back to Dublin, I'll go to a toy store and I'll get more of them. I never found them anywhere else in, in all of our travels in Ireland. Wow. Just that one Whoa. post office in that one little town in Ireland. And I, of course, I have a couple of them stuck up in my house now. But <clears throat> again, it shows a, a remarkable uh, popularity of uh, the, of that cartoon yeah. all over the world, you know. Yeah, it's, it feels wonderful to be a part of it, and it's still going mm-hmm. to this day, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They and of course they've. <clears throat> all right. Uh, one day I'm sitting on the toilet in the morning, doing what, waiting for something to happen, yeah. which is what happens when you're old. Yeah, and I get a phone call from my friend Jamie Alcroft, who is a, an amazing person in his own right. He was part of a show of a, a team called Mac and Jamie. And about four years ago, he had a heart and liver transplant. Yeah. Okay. And he's still with us and he's doing great. Wow. So Jamie calls up. He yeah, says, awesome. Hey, I just auditioned for the new uh, version of Rugrats. I said, great. What did you audition for? He said, a grandpa. I said, yeah, okay. That sounds right. <clears throat> but he said, then I, I asked if I could audition for Jack Riley's part. Okay, the one of the fathers. Yes, yeah, Stu. Because yes. Jack and Stu. Peace. Jack has passed away. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Rest in peace and and now. his agent said to him, oh, 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 no, no, no. They're recasting all of those parts. Oh, wow. And that's when I realized mm-hmm. Howard was not going to appear on the new version. Right. Yeah. Right. And, mm-hmm. But what but what what is still making waves and fans are the replays of the original ones. Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. I don't yeah. think fans have taken taken too well to the new one. I think you have to subscribe to it or something. Yeah. But Paramount yeah. Plus. Yeah, Paramount yeah. Plus. Yeah. Yeah. I, but but I, but uh, and I haven't actually seen one of them. Uh, yeah. but because I don't want to subscribe. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, but, you wanna know what they did to Betty? The yeah. Howard's wife. They made her a lesbian. They did? Yeah. Yeah. So how I mean it's it's like it's kind of like Howard isn't even really yeah like with this new iteration of Rugrats it's yeah basically as if Howard didn't even exist <laughs> yeah yes I know. that's what it's not even like. a part of it too yeah well, well I do I do know that <clears throat> um uh, Kath Susi who yeah. played my wife uh wa- wore the pants in the family yeah I mean you know we made that agreement that you because she's kind of you know, she's amazing. Talking, right she's an amazing mm-hmm. actress and yeah. and Howard Howard's kind of ineffectual. He's a bit of a nerd and all that, but it's you know it's a happy relationship. They have twins, yeah. you know. Uh, so I I don't I'm not shocked and surprised to hear that they made her a lesbian, but mm-hmm. it's still yeah I know it, it it's it's weird. It's yeah, a little it weird. 
Yeah. The, only, the only episode I've seen of the reboot, I think, is the first one. I haven't seen I, any of the I other I haven't ones seen yet. much of yeah. it. They released the shorts are on YouTube. They release shorts and it's oh okay. YouTube, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll look at that. I'll take a look at that All later right. today. Uh, but you know, I I do um, a, a podcast myself yeah. with a Ted Bonnet, a guy named Ted Bonnet called Phil and Ted's Sexy Boomer mm-hmm. Show. And what we've been doing is interviewing people like Weird Al Yankovic and Pan Gillette. And uh, recently we we interviewed Nancy Cartwright. Yeah. Uh, A wonderful voice actress. Yes. And and she's doing one of the voices on the new iteration. She is. That's right. Yeah, she returned. Oh, a wonderful person. And all of our interviews are available uh, at Phil and Ted's, uh, I think, no, sexyboomershow.com. Nice. And we, we, we got to interview so many fascinating people who are, you know, like us, older and have had long careers and lots of fun things to talk about, unlike me. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now you have fun things to talk about, too. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Yes. And if anybody's yeah. interested, I do a newsletter called Planet Proctor. Yes. Did I, did I send one to you, Wyatt? No. Well, I'm going to send one to you. Give, uh, give me all everybody's addresses, uh, including uh, uh, Julius. Okay. <laughs> I'll, make I'll, I'll, email I'll send out the last month's issue, which uh, it basically celebrates uh, my trip back to New Haven for my Yale 60th class reunion. Wow. Wow. Yeah. wow. Right? And Sam Waterston and I were that part of a awesome. panel on yeah. working in our 80s. But of course, I showed up a little late with my cane and I said, Is this the walking in my 80s? Uh, panel (laughs) but it was fascinating uh about 150 of our classmates showed up and we just had a wonderful wonderful time yeah and that's 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 awesome yeah 60 it's unbelievable so yeah yeah we're we're here you know yeah Uh, so so planet proctor is what i is what i'll send you Mm -hmm. and uh, you can go to planetproctor.com and see the the archives yeah what 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 Mm -hmm. i like about it is i've been doing it for about 25 years wow uh, okay as an outlet for what i how i see the world uh humorously and uh and uh, it's it's illustrated by a guy named Christopher Gross, who is amazing. Yeah. He's absolutely amazing, you know. And so you you will enjoy. It's a feast for the eyes as well as for the uh, the funny bone. Planetproctor.com. And wow. if you want anything, mm-hmm. fire sign, firesigntheater.com. We're still cranking stuff out. We have an enormous archive of material. Yeah. Right. So we're putting it together uh, uh, and and releasing it to our fans and anybody else who is interested. And the latest one is uh, selections from a show that we did on XM Satellite Radio uh, called Fools in Space. Oh, wow. Right. Mm -hmm. Which was the launch of XM Sirius Radio, which is now Mm -hmm. XM Sirius. And uh, what else? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Uh, I should tell you that the Firesign Theater was honored. Oh, maybe 10 years ago, uh, one of our records, Don't Crush That Dwarf, hand me the pliers, which predicted channel switching, click, 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> what was, was put into the National Archives at the Library of Congress as an hysterical, pardon me, historical recording. And about two years ago, they purchased our, our archives for oh, half yeah. a million dollars. Wow. 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 I've spent wow. it all, but you know, that's the way it goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, it's wonderful. Good. We we had a cultural influence. You know, we mm, actually definitely. influenced the culture. And yeah. certainly we we influence a lot of comedians uh, who have uh, for instance, I went we went after the reunion, we went down to New York and we saw six uh, Broadway shows in five days. Okay, because wow. that's the kind of folks we are. Yeah. And one of the shows we saw was Mr. Saturday Night starring Billy Crystal. And I had worked with Billy uh, in a, in uh, the first uh, comedy comic relief yeah. fundraiser. Okay. And uh, he, when he, when he came down from his dressing room to meet me and he was quoting fireside theater. Right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. so, so, you know, it's wonderful to know that, that we've had some kind of a, of a, an influence on the, 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 the comedians today. And some of them actually say that, which is really nice. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. We certainly mm-hmm. also inspired the Saturday Night Live crew 
because of the kinds of, of surrealistic stuff that they have done yeah. so in the beginning, at least, you know, crazy, yeah. wide, far out stuff, you know. Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, Jake, it's been a while since you asked a question now, but you asked the next. Yeah, question. I'm kind of worrying about something. Um, kind of some, since since you know, we talked about a little bit of Monsters Inc. a little bit, since you know you voice Charlie and Proctor, um, how does it feel? How, how well? So, what was it like to voice to 2019? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you talk about the Monsters Inc. Yeah, mm-hmm. that one. Yeah. Well, again, when we went into it, we go into a session. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. with with Pixar and and John uh, La- what's Lassiter. Lassiter. La- John Lasseter. You know, I'm so sorry John got into trouble, f- you know, for his behavior because That's he fine. really is a sweetheart. He's a wonderful guy, and we loved working with him. So you go in, and there would be actually they do like a casting session. They say, Phil, you do this voice, and Roger, Roger Bumpus, who is Squidward. Right. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Roger, you do it. Crazy. And, uh, you know, John, you do it. And then they would say, OK, Phil, you'll do this character. Yeah. And you go, fine, yeah. because that Roger would yeah. do another character eventually. And everybody would get to do one 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 kind of standout character. And uh, and then uh, you, you would have to wait maybe two months before they came back with yeah. more of the movie. Right. right. And, and your character yeah. would be in the movie. Now wow. your voice would be in, the, in that. Character. It was thrilling. That yeah. process was just, we just felt like we were in a, in a, a magic world. Really. Oh. We felt so happy to be doing yeah. what we were doing, you know? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. Okay. So if you were asked to, come back as Charlie Proctor, would you return? Do you think you'd Because there is a Monsters, Inc. series. Yeah, Monsters at Work. Yeah. Well, it, most of us have outgrown the the, the, the room. Uh, yeah. There is ageism in this business, okay? Yeah. And at a certain point, uh, I was t- actually told, we don't want any gray heads in the studio. Wow. For the, for the loopy. Oh. And I went, oh, okay. So the, it, it's passed on to a new group of yeah. people, which is fine. I mean, it's yeah, normal. it's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, I, I, I still, you know, I still work and I still do uh, some movie work and all kind. I'm doing yeah. a, a, a short film at the end of this of this month, for instance. Uh, and it's fine. It's, it's fine. Semi retirement is fine, you know. But of course, the curse of being an actor is. That you will, you can continue until you drop. Yeah, you know, right. <laughs> There's always an outlet. I belong to a theater company called the Antaeus Company, or pardon yeah. me, Antaeus. Antaeus, come see us. <laughs> and Antaeus was a Greek god who was immortal as long as his feet were on the earth. And we are a company that is rooted in classical theater, so we have our foot, you know, on Shakespeare, right? Yeah. And and, uh, and it's an actor based company. And I've been with them for 14 years now. We've done all kinds of wonderful plays and I've done musicals and of Gilbert and Sullivan again with my wife. And it's just been absolutely fantastic. So that keeps my hand in as an actor. And we also do a lot of readings, see, where it combines my ability to uh, read a script and bring a character alive with uh, presenting a play to the company to see yeah. if they like it enough to do a main stage production. So we do lots of readings of plays, sometimes semi-staged, usually just, you know, reading them uh, seated or standing at, at and it's fascinating. Yeah. And it, it kind of mm-hmm. keeps, it's, it's a way for me to combine my talents uh, in, and to, to help, you know, the company uh, progress. So, yeah. right. There you go. Keeps me happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what what would you say is the most challenging part about voice acting? Uh, that's a good question. I think it has to do with getting familiar with the limitations of, of what you're doing. Uh, it's like in acting, if you have a screen test, yeah. You know, you're not going to read it the way you would read a piece of material on stage. It's not yeah. going to be big like this. It's going to be more intimate. And that's right. what you have to learn 
in doing in any kind of voice acting. You have to learn to be intimate and 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 sound real. You know, so even if you're doing a zany character, you you're not you're not going to do it like this unless uh, they punch you to. <laughs> you're going to do it like this because yeah. it's why you know you're more welcome to come into the character. It's more yeah. it's, it's more charming, and this puts you away, pushes you away from it. <laughs> so, so that's one of the things that you learn. You learn how to kind of temper your uh, delivery, and it is a different art. I had to learn it. And I learned it by watching others who did it and uh, and being in the company of others who did it. Like I told you with Hanna-Barbera. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that that's also a choice that directors make uh, either do it as a radio show uh, or do it with separate sessions, you know, two right. people come. Right. And, and as I say, we did Rugrats, we did, did Rugrats that way because uh, people aren't always available. Yeah. You know, there you go. And, and, and that's one of the things about uh, looping and dubbing, too. Uh, we usually would uh, die for the big stars. Let me put it this way. OK, so a star is obviously not available to come in and loop and, du and, and yeah. du dub, dub over something and they change mm -hmm. the line. So you get a, a, a sound alike to, to, to say that line. Or if he's if he's falling off of a mountain then you have to fall off the mountain for him. You know, and it's hard to explain, but it's weird. Uh, I meant we did uh, voices for uh, uh, oh, silent. Oh, damn. What was that film? I won't be able to tell this story because I can't. It's a famous submarine film with Sean Connery. Uh, what's it called? Oh, I can't tell the story. Uh, the this, this story is basically Sean Connery is playing the captain of a submarine in this famous movie whose name may come to me. And, uh, and he does it with a Scottish accent, his, his voice, his normal voice. So I said, and, and he's supposed to be, you know, it's, it's a Russian submarine. Yeah. So I said to the ADR director, is Sean going to come in and overdub his role with a Russian accent? He said, Oh no, no, no. It, it, that's Sean Connery. I said, well, you know, uh, it, it, he, he doesn't sound Russian. He said, oh, no, he's not Russian. He's Latvian. I said, oh, that explains the burr. Yeah. Right. He, the Latvian mm -hmm. burr. Uh, <laughs> it's a terrible story. <laughs> I just I just I just I just looked it up. It's uh, the hunt for Red October. That's it. The hunt for yes. Red October. Yeah. And at the time that we were doing it, I was working with Russians who had just gotten out of the Soviet Union. Because of oh. Glasnost, right? Yeah. So there were there were a bunch of, of really happy Russians there. <laughs> and we all sang yeah. the, the national anthem and Ya Gavaril Nimnoshka Snimi. I spoke a little bit with them in Russian and yeah. it was fun. See, That's I learned awesome. to speak Russian because I went yeah. to the, I went to the Soviet Union with the Yale Russian chorus in nineteen fifty nine. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 We drank and sang throughout the Soviet Union. Okay. Soldatushki, bravari batushki, gedivaheshi moatki, etc. I sang all these wonderful folk songs that the Soviets, mm -hmm. Soviet citizens hadn't really, you know, had been suppressed. Yeah. Okay. And we sang in street corners and public squares, and we'd be surrounded then by curious Russians asking us all kinds of questions. Like how how old is Ella Fitzgerald, right? How much does a bottle of milk cost? Why do you surround us with missile bases? You yeah. see that star up there? Who put that star there? Yeah, we did. That's Sputnik. We mm. did that. You know, it, yeah. was, it was fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. And That's and awesome. the way that we really could have private conversation. The only way you could really talk privately with any Soviet citizens was late at night, walking the streets, these huge wide streets in yeah. Moscow and Leningrad. It was um, an amazing adventure. It really was. Yeah. I write about it in my book. Where's nice. my fortune cookie? I did. I mentioned that I wrote a book called, I wrote it with, with uh, yeah. uh, Brad mm -hmm. Schreiber. Yeah. Who, you uh, who forced me to, to, to uh, write it. And it's, it's also got lots of, of pictures in it. Oh, wow. That's yeah. cool. I'll definitely have to pick up. A yeah, it's yeah. Comic, it's comic very cool. You can, you can, you can just go online and, and find it. Yeah. Uh, do you have any voice? Oh, I, I, wait, oh, wait, I also did a spoken version of it. 
Oh, that's oh, cool. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, and that, and I, in that, I, I do some singing and uh, I added a couple of other little elements that aren't in the book. But, yes. And for yeah. all our viewers and listeners, links to where you can uh, get those will be uh, in the description. Oh, that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Do you have any advice for people who wanted to get, get into voice acting? Uh, don't. <laughs> that's for fun. Next uh, see, we got some other people actually give us that same answer. <laughs> no, but, but what what by that I mean, if you really seriously want to get into voice acting, you have to realize it's going to be a very very competitive uh, process. Have I just gone away? It says Bingle Productions. That's Matt. Oh, good. Here I am. All right. Um, people have to realize that it's a very competitive. Yeah. And. And the way to get into it is to take a class. Okay. There yeah. Are of, there are a lot of wonderful teachers yeah, all in, in cities throughout the United States. <clears throat> take a class, learn with others uh, what you're going to be required to do and find out if you can do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if you can, then yeah. I would say pursue, uh, pursue it. But the, the main thing out here, of course, is you have to be a member of the union, which at presently is uh, an amalgamation of AFTRA and SAG, SAG-AFTRA, right. which yeah. if you move the letters around, spells a gas fart. <laughs> that is not Gosh. the way I think of my union, but <laughs> yeah. SAG-AFTRA is a gas fart. And, uh, uh, and, and that's that if you get if you're in a union, you can get an agent. You can also get an agent if you're non-union and there are non-union jobs that are around. And that's another way to get started. But yeah. eventually you're going to want to join a union, get there a job go. that's, you know, that te- where you are Taft heart lead. Yeah. But Definitely. the thing, the main thing is, as I say, if you want to get into the business, uh, take a class and see if you got the stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then go for it. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So um, besides some of the things you showed us earlier, um, is there anything else you're working on uh, currently? Yeah, well, I will be doing, uh, as, as I think I mentioned, uh, the role of D- Detective Polehouse in uh, a new uh, Adventures in Odyssey, part of that mm-hmm. long running series. And I just read the script, in fact, and it's quite, uh, quite wonderful. It really features me, uh, not as a detective, but as the grandfather of one of the characters. And we're actually, uh, it's about virtual reality. So it's quite quite fascinating. I'm also doing several voices on a a new series, which uh, is called Hindsight. And it's it's a very clever science fiction fantasy uh, series, right? And that involves um, uh, Houdini. That involves mm. Houdini. Oh wow! You know, you know, interesting mystery. So, yeah. so that'll be fun. And then I'm doing a, a role in a, a pilot for a streaming series, uh, and I'm playing a teacher who is trying to teach kids the Peloponnesian War uh, by using rap music. Oh wow! Oh. Hmm. So, so that'll be fun. Wow! And, and you know, one one of the things that's nice about being here in Los Angeles is that uh, everybody knows how to reach me and people will, will contact me and say, Phil, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? And I've actually got more work that way than I have through my agent at this point, because wow. when you do an audition now, you don't know who you're competing with. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. everybody can do it from their home studio and they can be in Cincinnati or they can be in, yeah. in Mar- Maryland or Ireland for that matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, whereas in, in the good mm-hmm. old days, pr- everybody pretty much knew who was doing all the voiceover work and they'd say, well, let's get Phil Proctor and uh, Michael Bell to do this one, you yeah. know, and <laughs> boom, bingo, you'd be cast. So those days are, are long gone. But there's yeah. still work available in, in podcasts and things. So there yeah. you go. Okay. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So uh, so why, why don't you ask the next uh, question? Uh, do you have anything to say to your fans and supporters? Uh, yeah, keep it up. Okay. You know, I mean, uh, hold That's me up. We got you. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm, I'm really grateful yeah. for all of the fans. Uh, and the fans of the Fireside Theater are absolutely amazing. 
and uh, they they communicate with us on a regular basis. And uh, there's only two of us left, <clears throat> David Osman and myself. Sadly, Phil Austin and Peter Bergman passed away oh, years ago. Uh, yeah, mm, but yeah. we're we're carrying on. Uh, we're we're carrying on because our archivist Taylor Jessen is also a producer, a brilliant producer, and he is helping to crank out. Uh, Help, uh, helping us put together new compilations of stuff that we've done. One of the one of the is stuff we've done on the road. One of them, as I mentioned, is a radio show, Fools in Space. There's also a wonderful uh, book called uh, Duke of Madness Motors that has an MP3 in it of 18 hours of our radio shows. Okay, because we yeah, did radio was- shows at all kinds of stations, well, both listener supported and commercial during our career which is one of the way we honed our skills mm-hmm. to be able to turn out all the records. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Thank you for your support. You're I welcome. love getting the postcards. You're welcome. You know, I love Definitely. getting, I, I mean, I love hearing from everybody. Some, some fans send in uh, pictures to be signed. Okay. With a manila envelopes, self-addressed stamped envelope to wow. send back. Mm-hmm. And wow. I don't know where they get all these pictures from. I mean, I'm astounded sometimes at the stuff that they have. I like like uh, this one, for instance. This is one of the ones oh, that man! Yes! Oh, nice. wow. yes! a wow. fan sent me this and then also one to sign. You know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing. <sighs> I don't know where they get. They, they, they must take take pictures off the the the, the screen, you know, screen mm. saving and all that. But it's yeah. I love wow. it. I just love it. And, That's amazing. And I'll, I'll add I'll add other pictures that I showed you to their packet to surprise them. And, and Ooh. if they just want a postcard, I have a postcard with my picture on it and Howard on the other side. And I send that off and I can send those off all over the world. Nice. I, I love that it. is awesome. Nice. It's a great That's feeling. Amazing. It really is. It's mm-hmm. awesome. You know, yes. you're, you're, you're loved for the work that you do. Yeah. It's yeah. Awesome. There you go. Yeah. So if people uh, would like to contact you, where can people find you? Uh, my email is phil.proctor at mac.com. Yep. Okay. And uh, anybody's welcome to uh, send me a hello or ask for an autograph or anything like that. And uh, my website basically is planetproctor.com. Yeah. There you okay. Go. And he also has Twitter and Instagram. Wyatt said. Yeah, yeah, I have Twitter and Instagram. Which but, I follow uh, you both on. Yeah, but oh, good. But my I use yeah. Facebook mainly. Uh, yeah, to, to, to communicate, to you know, mm, you and, I, and I, I actually love doing Facebook. I love the, all yeah. the things that that's all awesome. you know, oh, yeah. my friends yeah. are doing. It, it, it's fascinating. So, hey, 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 Julius, how about you? Actually, no, Marty, how about you take the not last question? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm catching on. <laughs> Uh, oh, the next no. bingo live. The next bingo live is going to be interesting. Julius just oh. pops in, calls Marty Elmo. <laughs> People will be they'll, confused. They'll yeah, it's check out bingo live. Oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah. So yeah. who who, who are you going to be interviewing next, guys? Uh, uh, we don't know. Actually, we don't know. Didn't, didn't, you say, next there. didn't you say you're going to talk to Michael Bell? That will be in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah in, 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 the, in the future, you got Michael Bell and uh, Cheryl Chase coming Cheryl on. Chase, oh, good. Yeah. good. Well, Michael's give them officially. Love. Michael is definitely talk, talk, confirmed to us that he's sick with COVID right now. Yeah. Oh, has he got the the, the big C? Oh, yeah. Dear. yeah. And Cheryl okay. Chase recently oh, got out C. of having yeah, COVID. Cheryl, the little C. Oh. Yeah, so, so we'll probably schedule her soon. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, but that's bizarre. Uh, he lives in a wonderful uh, estate. Uh, out in the valley. This is Michael Bell, and it's called Los Residuales, Los Residuales, because it means the residuals. He was uh-huh. able, he was able to make his fortune doing, you know, voiceovers like butter, you know, yeah. and, and make enough money mm-hmm. to buy a house, you know. So yeah. th- those again were the good old days yeah. when there were just three networks, and yeah. you know. If you got a commercial, it would play on the networks and you could you could make enough money from that, you know, to, to put a down payment on a house or buy a car or something. And there was a uh, a bar in the, the valley where you, if you brought in a small residual check, which we often get for a dollar three or two cents or something like that, you mm-hmm. get a free drink. But then once cable started, everybody started getting these tiny checks and they had to stop 
do, giving away free drinks. Because yeah. Everybody was bringing in, you know, two cent checks and everything. And that happens with Rugrats. Uh, since Rugrats is playing primarily on cable, I'll get a stack of residuals like this and they'll add up to maybe, you know, $400. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> But it doesn't matter it, yeah. because I know that people are out there enjoying the show. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So, so, Mar- so, yeah, so Marty, why don't you finish uh, finish off with the last question? Mm-hmm. Yep. Don't even think about it, Julius. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, dude. So- you just you, you call him Big Bird. <laughs> oh. He calls no, he calls really. Julius Big Bird if he stops. Oh, boy. <laughs> anyway. Right. You should. I hope you know that. <laughs> uh, so this podcast is called the Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. As you know, when you think of nostalgia, what do you think of? Or nostalgia? Uh huh. Well, I actually think of uh, my years in Goshen, Indiana, growing up. Uh, you know, riding a bike uh, with a bunch of of pals, and uh, uh, in, in fact, I have a picture I can show you. Hold on. Just to take a second. Yes. Just so you know, people who are watching the audio, switch the video. Yes, there are definitely some parts during this interview and, well, others too. Uh, you would definitely stay want to switch to the, the video the version series. of YouTube. Yeah, YouTube you may as well just stay there. At this point, just watch us on YouTube. That's where we're just most. Watch us on YouTube. That's where most people find us anyway. That's where yeah. Philip Winter finds us. Yes. Yeah, He's commented the last Winter. time. Good friend and very good. Yes, very, dear very good. Shout out to you, Philip. Yes. Hey, uh, speaking of, thank you for the book and CD as well. Went on there for a second. Mm, no, yeah, I can't. Well. <laughs> I can't find it. I glued it to the wall. Anyway, oh. I'll, I'll just tell you about it. Uh, I grew up in, I was born in Goshen, Indiana. If you move the letters around, it spells he's gone because I am. And, uh, uh, and every, oh gosh. <laughs> it, when, when we moved to New York, uh, I would still go back every summer for, you know, to spend a summer with my grandparents mm. and my pals. That's awesome. Right? Yeah. And I also take mm-hmm. the train. I love sleeping on a train. I just love that the noise and the, the rocking and the, it's wonderful. So I take the train out to Goshen and uh, meet up with my pals. And we, we did amazing things. We would uh, scavenge the uh, alleys for uh, shipping boxes and things. And then we'd build something out of it, like a tank. We actually built a rocket ship once and we were up in it in in my friend Dayton Dallas's backyard and we were simulating a takeoff and we were, you know, moving sideways and the whole thing fell over. And I remember the, the sensation of, of falling to the ground. And one of, one of our, our friends, Quan Robinson, ended up hanging on a clothesline. Okay. He, he, he fell onto a clothesline, which stopped, you know, broke his fall. But uh, we then uh, told the, uh, the kids in the neighborhood, the young kids, that we had tried to take off and, the, and, and we crashed. And we charged them uh, a nickel to see the crash site. Okay, <laughs> that was the kind of stuff that we did, and we we were we oh my god, we were blowing things up all the time with firecrackers, and I don't know how I survived all of that, but it was my summers were filled oh with wonderful adventures with uh, you know my my, my pals, and uh, that's yeah, uh, I remember that to this day, you know, it was it was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, def- awesome. definitely. But yeah, thank you, thank you so up. much, Phil. This was, I was a blast. Yeah, I was. I'm glad. I when when do you think? When, when will this you. be available? Uh, uh, early right, August, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah, early yeah, August, I think. August. Early August, late July, around. I'll there. send it to you. I think. Yeah, yeah I'll send you the photo and the link. Great, great. Because I'll promote it on Facebook and. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Thank you so much for being part of our childhood. You keep up the great work and can't wait to have next. Thank you. We'll tell Michael and Cheryl you said hi. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And everybody, stay safe. All right. Well, you too. You too. And to all of our okay. viewers and listeners, thank you for tuning in to one, another one for all episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Of course, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive from all of us to all of you and from Phil, of course, as well. You are remember, worth it. you are worth it. And to stay always stay nostalgic. You're worth it. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.
See you next time on another episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. Be sure to follow us on social media and stream us wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember that you are worth it and to always stay nostalgic. Bye-bye.